A blessed day to everyone. Today we will discuss module 3. Crafting Business and Supply Chain Strategies. This lecture is only summary of the whole module. For specifics, refer to your module. To begin with, the central challenge of today's enterprise is simply stated. As the ability to establish and maintain competitive advantage in a global business environment. Perhaps the most critical dynamic in achieving this objective is this front of the supply chain strategy. An effective supply chain strategy enables the business to grow value by increasing customer responsiveness, increasing the efficient use of supply chain resources, and decreasing the cost of supply chain operations. These fundamental objectives are realized by leveraging configurations of supply chain channel capabilities, executing aggregate and detailed demand and supply plans, maximizing business value, and optimizing the performance of the supply chain operations to realize customer responsiveness, efficiency, and low cost goals. Before supply chain strategies are developed, corporate planners must first seek to align corporate level goal strategies and growth expectation with today's economic and marketplace realities. The first step in corporate planning is the process of crafting a comprehensive strategic business plan. The process begins with an analysis of the external and internal business environment. The external environment reveals the enterprise competitive strength, the forces driving marketplace change, the actions of competitors, opportunities for future success, and attractiveness of the firm's product and services to the customers. The internal environment reveals the internal strength and weaknesses such as resources, core competencies, capacities, and capabilities, and how they enable the enterprise to succeed in its competitive space. The development of effective corporate level plans involves five steps. The first is the definition of the enterprise long-term visions and corporate missions, culminating in the formulations of the objectives management wants to achieve, as well as serving as the basis for tracking company's progress and performance. The second step is concerned with determining the concrete courses of action the enterprise must follow if it is to realize the corporate mission and objectives. In the next step, the corporate strategy is translated into business unit, mission, goals, and strategies. Business unit strategies are separated into five generic types. They are the low cost provider, broad differentiation, best cost provider, focus low cost provider, and focus cost differentiation. 
is step four is concerned with the development of functional business unit strategies. In this area, the functional business departments such as the marketing, the sales, production, logistic, and so on, must each have a strategy that details how departmental competencies and capabilities support the business unit strategy. The final level of corporate level planning is the creation of a business unit operating strategies. Operating strategies are concerned with the management of operating units such as plants, distribution warehouses, and transportation, and specific operating activities such as logistics, marketing, campaigns, product development, and budgeting. The objective of operating unit strategies is to ensure that the resources and capabilities of the organization can realize the competitive advantage being sought by the business unit and detailed functions. Supply chain strategy is one of the five major functional strategies such as marketing, sales, financial, human resources, engineering designs of a business unit. Supply chain strategy creates value through five activities. Operating cost reduction, value creation through increased revenues, competitive advantage through differentiated customer service capabilities, competitive advantage through strategic supplier engagement, and value creation to long-term equity environment. These competitive values are realized through three central components of supply chain strategy. The first is the establishment of the performance attribute, attributes that guide operational goals. The SCOR model defines these attributes as reliability, responsiveness, agility, cost, and asset management efficiency. The second component centers on establishing how the supply chain process drivers such as customer focus, channel design, sourcing inventory, transportation, and technology will be used in pursuit of targeted levels of resources, responsiveness, and efficiency. The final component of supply chain strategy is defining the performance matrix, detailing business performance plan. An important tool to guide planners in supply chain strategy design is the supply chain strategy matrix. The purpose of this matrix is to make visible the intersection of, of the supply chain's performance attributes with its operational performance drivers. The goal of the process is to enable planners to attain a fit between marketplace strategies identified at the business unit planning level and the capacities and resources available in the supply chain. Obstacles inhibiting strategic fit are the result of growing uncertainty in the demand and supply, increases in customer demand for a shorter delivery times, lower costs, and higher product performance, globalizations of the supply base, changing business and technology environments, and the development of new business marketplace strategies. It is difficult to conclude a discussion on crafting a supply chain strategy today without 
consideration of risk. It is simply not enough to make decisions regarding supply chain strategies by considering the fit between performance attributes and operational drivers alone. Planners must also weigh the probability of the emergence of internal and external disruptions that can do even the best consider a strategic plan. In fact, the more complex the reach of the business strategy, the more the supply chain strategy is exposed to disruptive events. As the supply chains grow more global, they are exposed to a variety of unplanned risk. Including supply disruption, supply delays, demand and price fluctuations, government regulations, interference, and natural disasters. If appropriate risk management plans are not in place, this risk can significantly damage the supply chain performance. All in all, supply chain resilience is improved by following six best practices. First, enhancing supply chain partner relationships. Second, improving supply chain risk mapping. Next, developing greater information system backup and redundancy. Next is simulating or drilling risk contingency plans. And then developing greater diversity in supply chain material partners and logistics. And it is followed by optimizing supply chain safety stack levels and locations. Hope that you have learned something today. Thank you very much and God bless everyone.